Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my iceberg chart tier list video. Welcome back to the channel if you're one of the 11 subscribers I have at the moment, and if you're new, please remember to like and subscribe at the end of this video. Now today I'm going to be ranking some iceberg charts on a classic tier list. Why you ask? Well since my channel is currently dedicated to one dying meme, why not combine icebergs and tier lists for a whopping two dying memes? That my friend is the secret to YouTube success, so without further ado, let's get right into this video. I'll make a few things clear up front. When I rate an iceberg, my rating is a holistic interpretation of it. This means that an iceberg's rating has to do with the icebergs themselves, videos on the iceberg, the iceberg's timing, and any potential impact it had on the trend and the iceberg community as a whole. So remember that I might be referring to different icebergs at once, depending on how many different people made one for one subject, and also remember that I am not criticizing any individual YouTuber or chart creator or anyone besides the general interpretation of the iceberg itself. Also, please do not take my opinion so seriously. I love this trend, and basically all of these videos are, are good in one way or another. Now that that's made clear, let's jump into number one. We're going to kick this off with the Mario 64 iceberg. Okay, so you already know this is going to be a good one. Just some quick points about this iceberg. It's actually a really good iceberg. It's, it's not just that it was an early on and, and popular one. The theories here are very interesting. It comes from an era of gaming where graphics and limitations made for some very interesting mysteries and ambience in general. Mario 64 is full of bugs and glitches. There's just lots to explore about this game in general. Now this iceberg had a huge impact on the community. It really helped fuel the trend. It was super popular. And honestly, I think the Mario 64 iceberg helped the iceberg trend live for twice as long as it probably would have. This landed around the same time as the Great Nintendo League too, which proved Luigi sort of existed, so it was great timing. And last but not least, the personalization theory. Guys, this crappy addition to every other iceberg was actually really interesting for the Mario 64 one. Honestly, it was a fun theory to kind of lose yourself in for a sec, and this, along with other reasons, lands the Mario 64 iceberg at S tier. Okay, next on the list is the Diary of a Wimpy Kid iceberg. This one was awesome. It's very funny in general. Um, it's very relatable content. You know, everyone's read this book. It came out a little while after the Sociopath Greg video, um, so it just landed at a pretty good time. Um, it, one downside is it's a little bit more funny than informative, and it's slightly shorter than other icebergs, but honestly, it was amazing. We got lots of good memes out of it. Uh, overall, I'm going to put this one at an A. Here we've got the Conspiracy Iceberg. So, right off the bat, there are obviously so many of these. They're, they're huge, they're super common. Wendigoon series on this has been a highlight. It's been super popular, a lot of people have enjoyed it. There are so many entries with this one, though. Uh, which is a blessing and a curse in a little bit. It's fun to lose yourself in, but honestly, it just gets overwhelming. You can't really sit down and read it. And some of the stuff on there is just garbage. I mean, this, some of the stuff is just so stupid, it shouldn't be there. Throughout history, there have been cases of governments purposefully farming clouds. Overall, it's very fun and pretty consistent content. I'm going to put this one in an A. Now let's take a look at the ideology iceberg. So this is very similar to the conspiracy iceberg as far as density and range from stupid to interesting. Though downside is it, it's hard to encapsulate an entire ideology in just one iceberg entry. There are plenty of ideologies where reading the top sentence off of Google just doesn't give it justice, and it just doesn't fit really well with the iceberg format, but it's still pretty fun overall. I'm going to give this one a C. So with the YouTube iceberg, some videos and editions of it have been fantastic, but it seems to pop up constantly. A lot of the entries follow tropes, like this spooky video that was made as a joke or something, or this true crime element intertwined with some video. It, it, if you're on YouTube a lot, many of these entries will just feel like, you know, nothing crazy. It feels a little gimmicky, but it's a fun listen overall, even if you know a lot of the entries. I'm going to put this one at a B. Next, we're going to look at the Cartoon Network Iceberg. This one is just awesome. Lots of fun stuff, lost media, classic bumpers and trivia and stuff. Uh, relates a lot to that awesome generation of cartoons where we had Adventure Time, Regular Show, The Amazing World of Gumball, and 
man, we're not going to have stuff like that for a while. So uh, it was a great iceberg overall. Um, honestly, didn't have a huge impact on the trend or community, um, but it was really good, so we're going to give this one a B. The Nintendo Iceberg. Okay, so here's the deal with this one. There's just too many entries and things Nintendo Icebergs can have to, to be on one iceberg and fit well. Also, with a lot of Nintendo fans, including myself, there's huge interest in some franchise, but little to none in others, which makes having a Nintendo as a whole iceberg a little boring to listen to at times. I'll put this one at a C. Star Wars. So this iceberg has some really good parts to it, which is what gives it a high rating, but it's not quite perfect. One highlight was Wendigoon's video. It was really fun and focused on theories and trivia. Great for casual enjoyers. Uh, one downside to this, though, is that some longer versions of this iceberg just get annoying. They focus on trivia that's not interesting. But most importantly, they try to mix lore-related trivia with, like, production-related trivia. And depending on which one of those you enjoy, it's just trying to appeal to two different audiences, and it's not quite great for the iceberg format. But overall, this is a good one. I'm going to give it an A. Gen Z trauma. Uh, there are many icebergs on this topic, some that aren't maybe labeled as Gen Z, but they generally try and capture early 2000s, late 90s era stuff. Uh, it's super well-defined and very relatable. That's like the greatest highlight of this iceberg. Uh, totally fun, awesome. It hits perfectly with some people, but the obvious caveat is that older and younger people aren't going to appreciate it you know, because they're just outside of that generation. But for those who were there, this iceberg is great. This one gets an A. The Minecraft iceberg. Guys, this iceberg was just incredible. It captured a lot of great memories and love for older versions of Minecraft that many of us, like myself, have. From Pocket Edition trivia, like the Nether Reactor core, to old hero brine theories, it was just a good time. This iceberg came at a time when Minecraft popularity had been rising for a bit, theories are starting to get popular, and arguably this iceberg gave birth to this awesome series, which I'm a huge fan of. So overall, this one is just incredible. I'm giving this one an S. Disturbing Wikipedia Articles Iceberg. Okay, so the topics in this iceberg are very well put together. They're generally well organized. I just don't think wiki articles are a topic made for the iceberg format, you know? These are things that are better to sit down and read or listen to, not summarize as quickly as possible. This one gets a C. The iceberg is okay, the content just doesn't fit here. Add and PSA icebergs. Okay, so this entry suffers basically the same problem as the last one. Ads and PSAs can be incredibly moving. I believe some of the creepier ones can really, like, move people not to smoke or make safer decisions while driving, just, you know, for example. But the problem is, you need to watch all of it, and these commercials may be upwards of two minutes each. A lot of people, like myself, listen to icebergs while playing games or doing some mindless work, and you really need to devote full attention to these entries, even more so than the wiki ones. So great content and organization, but it's terrible for an iceberg. I'm giving this one a D. And please remember, I'm not criticizing any YouTubers who make videos on these subjects. I've watched and enjoyed a ton of them. I just don't think the content fits the format in this instance. The SpongeBob iceberg. Okay, this is a fantastic iceberg. It's incredible, it's fun to watch and listen to. Um, but the thing that really sets it apart from other great icebergs is that the timing was just impeccable. Um, you know, the show's a little less talked about now than the past few years, maybe, but theorizing about Spongebob is starting to get popular. Lost Media is popular right now. We've got this YouTube series going on right now, which I won't spoil, but you should totally check it out. Um, Skin Theory came out a couple years ago now. It's just, it's a good time for Spongebob theories. This iceberg was awesome and had a huge impact on the community, kept the trend going. I'm giving this one an A. The South Park Iceberg. This one is super fun. Uh, honestly, I love it because it's super funny and entertaining to watch. Even if you're not a huge South Park fan, you can just laugh while watching this one. Uh, we've got like 20 years of this show going on, so there's a ton of lost media, Easter eggs and theories, your classic iceberg staples, and there's a ton of content to get here. Um, only critique is that it didn't have a huge impact on the community, which is a pretty common theme for cartoon icebergs. Slightly less of an audience compared to ones like the Spongebob iceberg, which is why this one gets a B. But otherwise, it's great. You should check this out. Next up, Halo iceberg. I love this one. It's a ton of fun. Classic Easter egg and hidden content staples. It's great. 
I do think the Easter eggs work to this iceberg's detriment a little bit. Halo is filled with Easter eggs. I mean, we're talking like hundreds of them. And I don't think icebergs are the best way to enjoy Easter eggs because it's really hard to rank them. And, you know, in, unless they were hard to find or had crazy community collaboration. And there's just so many. On the whole, it's a great and fun iceberg. Just nothing too crazy. Um, it's well suited for casual fans. It is pretty good. I'm going to give this one a B. History icebergs. History icebergs, there's, there's a huge range of these, so they're hard to evaluate on the whole, but I'll give it a shot. A big picture history icebergs that just cover human history suck. I mean, they aren't fun until you get to the lower tiers. You're just like, you're just reading basic topics that everybody knows about. History of specific countries and places might get pretty interesting, but I don't see those really often. This is a great example of a terrible iceberg because you probably know most of the information and you won't get much fun knowledge out of the short time you get per entry. It's just kind of stupid, on honestly. Moving on to cut content. Cut content icebergs can be a ton of fun. The only drawback is just not being interested in the games. Honestly, cut content is better fit for specific videos that are a little bit longer. I think these are great because they can highlight some fun trivia of games, and it also highlights community collaboration, which is always fun, you know, with regard to, like, data mining and such. But other than that, you might just not like it, and there's not much else to say. It, these are okay. I'm going to give it a B. Lost Media. Okay, very incredible iceberg. Lost Media icebergs are a great way to get into the growing Lost Media community. The only thing holding this back from S tier is that a lot of Lost Media stories are better enjoyed individually so you can get more information per entry. But otherwise, this is awesome. I'm giving it an A. Iceberg icebergs. Okay, so I, I put these in here as a joke, but yeah, these kind of stink. People just repost this with slight variations a lot. Um, you know, some are fun because people try to put effort into these, but it usually just ends up being a descending list of icebergs based on their YouTube views. And, and, I, and I mean, come, come on, come on. Who sits around and ranks icebergs? That That is just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay, moving on. Google Maps iceberg. Guys, this iceberg is fantastic. It's a great example of an iceberg with a huge audience. This got a ton of people into the iceberg community who weren't necessarily gaming fans. Uh, Google Maps stuff, they're, they're, these entries are super short, so the iceberg format works really, really well. Um, but the iceberg is also, the iceberg format is also better than just showing compilations of strange Google Maps locations because you can rank them, you can talk about what's mysterious and different things like that. Um, and usually these icebergs show more than the compilations which just like to repeat the same few things on Google Maps. So these were a fresh light. They were, it, was a, it was a new take on the subject, and th these were just perfect. This is an S-tier iceberg. Next, we're taking a look at religion and cult icebergs. These ones are fun, and there have been some great videos coming out of this subject, but on the whole, most of these just feel like lists of religions or cults by descending order of popularity. Uh, and that's not really, that's not what a good iceberg is made of. Icebergs on individual religions are awesome, but icebergs on different religions are boring. It's usually just copy and paste lists from Wikipedia, like I said, you know, based on how many people observe that religion. Cult ones are pretty fun, though, because you get to hear from different cults than just the, you know, super common ones. So overall, these are pretty good. I'll put this at a C. Pokemon Iceberg. This is a staple iceberg, very fun and entertaining. Only downside is that there's just so much stuff to cover with Pokemon, and some of it isn't interesting depending on what you like about Pokemon. You know, there's huge subdivisions with Pokemon, right? You could divide it by the card game, the icebergs by generation to generation, or even like subjects like fan games. This one gets an A. Main thing keeping it back from an S is the fact that as a Pokemon fan, you just may like some parts of it and not everything. So kind of divides the audience a little bit. But overall, this one's amazing. Call of Duty Iceberg. Great iceberg overall, but kind of similar to Halo in the sense that it's just filled with years of Easter eggs. But it is tied to a good community. Just not super different other than that. A fun iceberg for sure, but nothing special. We're giving this one a B. The Bible Iceberg. I really like this one because it's got great trivia and it's also contributing to this rise of videos coming out about Bible subjects, like especially angels. Uh, Wendigoon, another Wendigoon shout out. He's especially made huge contributions to that trend. 
And the iceberg just complements this, this trend pretty well. Overall, the Bible one's a fun trip, but I can't understand why a lot of people just wouldn't find it interesting because they've got no experience with this, so I'm going to put it at a B. Monsters, Inc. Iceberg. Uh, this one is a pretty fun iceberg that you should <clears throat> definitely check out after you watch this video. T to be honest, it it's not a great video, but there's just something about the guy that did it. Man, I, I, I don't know what it is, but he just makes it great. I love this. We're giving this one an S. Alrighty, guys, with that over with, I will keep this conclusion short because that's how it should be. But I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this content and what you want to see next. Let me know if you want to have a part two because I honestly just picked like 20 random icebergs that I could totally do another one if you guys enjoyed this. I'd ask you to help my small channel grow by liking and subscribing. I wish you the best for your weekend. Catch y'all later, guys.